Baikonur in the Soviet Union, the Soyuz spacecraft on the launch pad at 19 minutes and 26 seconds to go to the historic launch for the joining up of two spacecraft and an American and a Russian spacecraft in the Apollo Soyuz mission. With those first pictures ever shown from Baikonur before a launch, we welcome you to the BBC Space Studio for the coverage of this mission. During the entire mission, by the way, everything at Baikonur appears to be going perfectly well. For the coverage of the mission, we have the help of Mike Buzilic, who's here with me in the studio, and through, throughout the mission will be handling the more technical aspects of the, of the mission, since he is systems manager for the people who built the, the American spacecraft and the docking module, the new part that goes between the two spacecraft when they dock, and has been in contact with the Russians for some years during the preparation of it all. We have Michael Charlton in Russia and Richard Lindley in America. Well, with uh, three minutes and 20 seconds to go, let me tell you, before we go back to the live pictures, in fact, let's go back to them now. There's a shot coming in of uh, mission control there at, uh, at Kaliningrad. Uh, Leonov, I don't think it's going to be too much like that during the flight. He's, he's a very extrovert, very humorous man, and uh, most of the time we were there talking to him at the press conference, he's making jokes. So I think uh, that was, as it were, a public statement. Uh, you know Leonov, he's, yes, he's um, that way, isn't he? He's very lively. Yes, he's very lively, and I think we can expect uh, during the mission between Stafford and him uh, quite lively, lively sequences. But naturally, when they make some statements, uh, they are quite serious because they are representing both of their governments. Yes. Okay, let's go back to the live pictures where we are seeing the picture in mission control in Kaliningrad showing uh, at the back of the room, or the front of the room, sorry, the front of the room, in front of all the consoles, the countdown. Interesting to note they're, they're doing a count-up. They're doing a count-up to the moment of launch, whereas the Americans do a minus. Is there any technical reason why you would do that, Mike? No, I think it was just a convention that we started doing it that way, and uh, all documentation was made that way. Yes. So there, is no, there was no reason, just a convention. And let's see if we can get hold of the sound that we're getting from Russia with the translator working on it. And uh, hear what's going on. Everything A-OK. -okay. There's that certain sort of lack of information coming out. It's strange that because, well, perhaps it's to be expected, the, uh, the information coming out of Houston at this time before the launch is pretty non-stop, isn't it? Uh, that's right. But less uh, than five minutes to go. Uh, really, James, right now they're just waiting for T-minus uh, 20 seconds when they ignite uh, the mission sequencer yes. and start the automatic sequence. Now, uh, after that uh, automatic launch sequence starts, ignition is irreversible, isn't it? There's medical no parameter, yeah. medical once conditions, the, perfect. Once the ignited, everything uh, A-OK. Okay. Uh, ah. Launch is irreversible. Yes. Yes. The medical conditions are OK, they say. Yeah, I mean, the, the Apollo can stop at any point before it leaves the ground, can't it? That's correct, yes. Well, with uh, that irreversible ignition, which we hope is going to come up in not too long, uh, let's now go over to Michael Charton to pick up the commentary on the last few minutes to this historic launch of the Russian spacecraft. Well, these are remarkable pictures. They're coming to you from the deserts and mountains of Central Asia, out on the steppe of Kazakhstan, the Soviet cosmodrome at Baikonur, out near Omsk and Tomsk, if you want to find it on the map, between the Caspian and the Aral Sea a place which was wrapped in secrecy for many years and uh, which the U-2, the American spy plane, was built to discover. And it was on this same launch pad that the first Russian ICBM intercontinental missile was seen by the U-2. And it was this place that the Turkish radar stations, which ring the southern part of the Soviet Union, were built to keep under surveillance what was happening here in all the years of secrecy. It was on this same pad where we see the Soyuz rocket standing now that uh, the first Sputnik was launched, the event which shocked and astounded the Western world when it happened, and from the same pad to Yuri Gagarin, the first red star in space, became the first man to orbit the Earth. The rocket that we're seeing, Soyuz, was the object of the closest attention for so many years by all of us in the West. Um, this is a military rocket, incidentally, and will be launched by the American Strategic Rocket Forces. 
and the swing arm pulls away the cradle on which the rocket was raised, and we're only a few seconds away from launch now. We are gathered, as the Soviet leaders have told us here, on the eve of a notable event. So let's watch it. Ignition. All comrades wish you the very best of luck. Everything normal. Well, there's the first of the impossible problems over. That appears to be a perfect launch from Baikonur. You can hear the excited voices of the Russian cosmonauts, and that's what they've left behind and what they won't be seeing for another week as they head off into space and their rendezvous with the Americans sometime tomorrow. 40 seconds, flight normal, on board, everything normal. They're approaching a dangerous stage uh, in this mission because the flight before last one with this particular rocket Soyuz ran into trouble and something like a hundred miles up. The Russian cosmonauts had to abort their flight and uh, the American spacemen who are here in Moscow we were talking to, they met that crew at Star City near Moscow here a couple of days ago and found them all fit and well and joking about it, but that obviously was a pretty frightening part of the last space flight. Well, Especially in now, combustion chamber, well over normal, hour, perfect. up going up through the 60,000 foot mark. This uh, particular launch takes about the same length of time as the Apollo launch, uh, lighter, lighter spacecraft, of course building up speed all the time. The speed build-up is tremendous. They're up around 100,000 feet already and they're going somewhere close to 2,000 miles an hour. You can see the trail coming out there from those four strap-on engines around the outside of the bottom of the rocket and four more in the center of the rocket. That's an eight-engine rocket going up there. Stand by for separation. And 120 seconds, first stage separation accomplished. Yeah, you saw them dropping off. You see the, the engines there drop off? Second stage rocket working satisfactorily. Two and a quarter minutes up. About 35 miles up, speed somewhere around 5,000 miles an hour, and probably anything up to about 40 miles away out across the steppe. 60 seconds. Three minutes to go, and at, I make it somewhere around uh, 60 miles up. They're heading, my can't they, for a, an initial orbit of, at the beginning of the orbit anyway, it's something like 100 miles. Launch escape system jettison. Yeah, they're heading for uh, 123 uh, miles uh, by uh, 101 miles. The crew is carrying out a reportage from... They have jettisoned the launch escape system. So yes, which means then they, there's only one way they can go now, and that's on up, or come back down using the spacecraft itself. Uh, that's correct. Right, yes. And let me give you a view of roughly where they are physically, as it were, on the map. As they come out uh, over, out from Baikonur, heading out over the steppes, northeast, heading into that, to the orbit there. Um, at this moment on our map, they're, they're showing uh, themselves about halfway up to the borders of Mongolia. I would, would say, right? That's correct. They're just on the... Uh, 250 seconds in, the launch escape tower is gone. 